Well, hi there. Welcome back to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And you're a hummingbird friend. I love them so much. I really do. I had four of them today in my yard. I thought you were going to say you had four of them for lunch. (laughs) I had a a hummingbird grilled cheese sandwich. It was delightful. Tastes like chicken. Yeah, it does. No, I actually had four of them in the the uh, the backyard today, and I have a bunch of fountains there, and I think they're attracted to water and the bubbling up of the water. And then um, they were feeding on flowers, man. I just, I love them. And I grew up in Wisconsin going there for my summers, and we'd always put the hummingbird feeder out with the red sugar nectar, Mm -hmm. which I don't know if that's... Is that PC well, still? I mean, you don't like the food coloring, do we? It's there's pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, some people say don't do it. Yeah. Some people say it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, you're right. The right. The, the verdict isn't completely out on what um, what the impact might be of food coloring on a hummingbird. And but, if you, you know, and if you are a birder. Than anything unnatural is not probably. Okay. Yeah. But hummingbirds, I mean, they are amazing. Have you seen some of these videos that are on YouTube uh, where they show you in slow motion, you know, what the hummingbird does to get the nectar out of a flower? And you, and in fact, I think I think I even saw a video where it was uh, nectar cam, if you will, where the camera was deep inside the flower, and so you could see from the flower's perspective as the hummingbirds coming in. You know, getting it. Sorry, what? I know that let was hear, my. Let me hear no, me. that really wasn't my hummingbird nectar sound. Nectar cam. I like nectar cam. Nectar cam. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Dole with ne- ne- nectar cam what seven. Else? I mean, what else do you call it? It's like deep inside the flower. You I know? like it. I think it's perfect. Yeah. So we thought we'd talk about ways to bring these beautiful, amazing little gifts of love to your garden, right? I mean, yeah, they really do. They're, they kind of bring out a whole party that that other birds maybe not don't bring they're out. Playful. They, they're playful. They make me feel great. They're like little. They're just like little fairies in a way. Yeah. And I love how they can fly backwards. And every now and then we have. Uh, I have a window outside my office where we have a couple hum, hummingbird feeders, and sometimes they'll actually stand. I mean, you you think of a hummingbird always in motion, never stopping, never stopping, but it's so it's so unusual to see it actually perch. Like just you know, for a I know, I don't think I've ever seen one perch. Yeah. Really. Huh. And you don't have a favorite color. You don't. You don't really care. I. What well, you mean of hummingbirds? Mm. No, I like the ones that are sort of green and I blue. I was. That's yeah. that's my favorite. The greenish, yellowy, blue. Well, what's that one? I I don't know. It's the don't green and blue one. It's the green one. <laughs> It's the aqua one. I don't have the names. It's the green one. I don't have the names, but uh, I thought we'd talk about ways to make sure that these uh, that these cute little creatures come to your yard. So the thing is that they're looking for trumpet-shaped flowers. So look at a trumpet. Think of the schnoz. Think of the, you know, that is the nectar cam. Sure, yeah. <laughs> that knows. That is what the hummingbird knows, knows. Right. And it, it, they, don't, they can't smell, but they know that that, the color, looking for the bright color and the shape. So those those uh, ruby throated uh, hummingbirds, and for instance, they're going to go. They they want those those trumpet shaped flowers. So that's what you need to think about when you're going to the garden center. You're going to get a variety of that. They're they're attracted to red, aren't they? They like red. They yeah. like bright colors of all kinds, mm-hmm. and and mainly they also like that shape because that's what they're they're trained to do, mm. or they instinctively know what to do. Uh, so fragrance is not the essential element. It, it's really, it's more the shape and the color. Okay. So um, let's talk about some of the different kinds of, uh, of plants and flowers that will bring them uh, to you. So for instance, shrubs. Actually, they, they like roses. They like hibiscus. Um, and they like certain kind of trees. Like if you have a crabapple tree. Um, or a black locust tree and certain vines, honeysuckle. That makes sense. Yeah, they love honey. The, they, they always go to my honeysuckle. You have a honeysuckle. Yeah. Or how about do you have this morning glory? Have you seen that vine where the it has flowers that are kind of a cobalt blue? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it blooms you know, in the morning. You know, I planted those in my my old house in Woodland Hills, California, uh-huh. and they literally took over. Like the entire yard became. Yeah. The, it was beautiful. But like within a year, I couldn't see my neighbor. Almost it was like, like a weed. A, it was yeah. like a curtain of yeah. purple flowers. Right. Gorgeous. Yeah. But be beware, they're they're very invasive. They seem to like a little bit of moist, yeah. humid air, don't they? Yeah. Not they too dry. Do. Not too, and not too much sun. Mm-hmm. Like, like right in the middle. Uh, but yeah, so the honeysuckle, the morning glory, um, the trumpet creeper, those are all great vines that attract the the uh, hummingbird, and then other wildflowers that also work. Uh, something called bleeding heart. Have you ever seen yeah, that? Yeah. Again, they have that kind of that same kind of a just 
trumpet is the best way to describe it. Just right. Look for that musical instrument look, you know, and, and that's what the hummingbird. And they're into lantana too, aren't they? They like lantana. Yeah. yeah. Begonias, they love those. They love begonias. Um, that's like the in and out burger for the for the <laughs> hummingbirds, the begonia. They just love them. Now, some other things to think about, because the hummingbird garden is also a great way to capture um, birds on film or on video, because now you're having this, this beautiful, fantastical garden that's coming to life. So why not take pictures of it and enjoy it as it's happening and put it on Facebook or whatever? Kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out if I if I already have them coming, I guess I don't need a hummingbird feeder. I think you should. Our neighbor has several hummingbird feeders, and she's become such the queen of the hummingbird. You know, uh, she just she basically talks. She's, like a she's the whisperer. She's a hummingbird whisperer. Right. And and yeah, and and they know, and so she's going through the food every week. She's having to refill it. Hmm. So you were talking about, do you go with with the food that you can buy? Well, um, you know, I think to each his own. But you also can make your own nectar, and there's all different kinds of recipes. You go online, uh, and it's basically using a, a, a sure some kind, but don't use honey. They say don't use honey because that's going to be bad. Uh, so so it's just like a. I remember what we used to do is like one to four ratio, right? Yeah. Like one sugar, yeah. four water, and then you boil it, right? Get it into a syrup. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, but I have used the the store bought kind that comes in a powder or in a liquid, and it's and it's that red, you know. Um, the thing is that they are attracted to color. Yeah. But you can, but if you're you know nervous about it, you can also make your own natural kind or get an organic type, and then just buy a red organic feeder. Oh. Or I say hummingbird feeder. I and should then say. the feeder's the so thing. So the glass, not not the yeah. the liquid. So it's attracted to the uh, yeah. Because red dye number seven, that could be dangerous to the hummingbird. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Yeah. Um, another way to get the hummingbird's attention is to uh, to basically decorate your little feeder with red or orange surveyor's tape. Oh, okay. I don't know how cute that would look, but if, you know... They just love the color. You go to the hardware store and you get some of that, and, and it uh, it's thought that it's they... It's going to look like a crime scene. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, it might be something kind like, of to they're try. They're like the detectives of the bird kingdom. Yeah. Other other uh, plants that these guys like, by the way, and back to your, your pond, you've got to get, I keep telling you, you've got to get the canna. They love the canna, oh. too. Oh, they love the canna. You know, maybe that's, I think I have canna, and I think that's what they were kind of mm -hmm. hovering near today. Mm -hmm. I got one little plant that had the red flower. And I think that's it's that's the canna. canna. That's I think the one. The that's the one. They also like fuchsia. Now, I know you probably know what fuchsia is, that these are very shade loving. A lot of times you see them in baskets. They kind of dangle down again. It looks like the little trumpet effect. Yep. And they're in a magenta or a pale pink and a white. You know what I'm talking about? I do. And they love to put their little nose, their little beak in there because all the good juice and the nectar is right in there. Hmm. So, anyway, some ad advice and some tips to bring. Hummingbirds to your life because it's so much fun. You know what else? I, uh, they also make me feel like when I see dragonflies. Oh, I, so I like say, the blue ones. It's that hov that hovering thing that, mm -hmm. that kind of really gets your attention. And when they have you ever seen a dragonfly when it stops and it turns its head and its eyes and it's almost like yeah. some kind of a Jurassic Park creature. Yeah, but, that's right. But in a gentle way. Uh, yeah, love them. Yeah. yeah, I like the blue ones. The orange ones are cool, too. Yeah, they're all good. They're all good. Well, when we come back, we have more fun and adventures uh, to share as we uh, guide you through the spaces you call home to help improve your home and improve your life. This is Home Wizard, Cindy Dole and Eric Stromer. We're back in a moment. This is our 